All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Dustin, and this is the third video in where we're trying to create an asteroid style game in our Scion 2D game engine. If you haven't seen the first two videos, I recommend that you go back and watch those first because this will be a direct continuation of those videos. You can see those both here and here. So at the end of the last video, I left you guys with a small challenge to create the new Lua Asteroids class. However, before we do that, this white background is looks a bit dull. We're quickly going to go and change the, this background to something else. I chose this dark purple background from the space pack that we got from Open Game Art at the in the first video, and its size is 256 by 256 pixels. Now our window is 640 by 480, so we're going to want to basically tile the background like a grid. And since it's 640 wide and 480 down, we're basically going to have three columns and two rows. So three across will be more than 640 and two down will be more than 480. Okay, so let's go do that right now. First thing you wanna do is pick the background you're gonna to wanna to use. And if your background isn't the same size as this, you're gonna to have to adjust your columns and your rows according to get it to fit. We're basically just gonna make a grid, okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to put this in your textures folder. So we're back in the code here. So if we go to my assets and in my textures, I need to refresh this because I've changed it if it wants to refresh. So see, we have the dark purple background now. Okay, so you're gonna want your texture in there. So before we can use that texture, we actually have to add it to our asset defs. And we're just gonna put it in here. It's pixel art. And what was the name of that? Go back, dark purple VG, dark purple bg.png and we're just going to call this bg for or background okay so that's in and that will be loaded for us now we want to go and create a function like a kind of like the load entity but we'll make another one and we'll call it load background we'll put this right here the load background function is a pretty straightforward function just go function load background Okay, it's not gonna take anything because we know exactly what it is. And we have two column or two rows and three columns. So we'll do our rows first. So four I equals zero. Two do. Then we'll have another four for J is equal to three. That's our columns. Or for J equals zero, sorry. Then we go for three do. Then we'll put our, both our ends and end. Okay. We're basically doing a nested for loop here. Let's get this a bit bigger. First thing we're going to do is add basically a tile entity. Now this will last through the whole game because we're probably not going to be changing the entities. And if we do, we'll probably just loop through all the, the BG. So all the entities that have BG for a group and we'll add those in. So we'll go BG tile. So background tile is equal to entity and we won't give it a tag but we'll give it a group of bg then we'll say bg tile add component first thing is going to be a transform and it's going to be vec2 okay the first vec2 is our position and the position is going to be j for our x times we know it's 256 and then I times 256. Awesome. And we're just going to have this for a scale of one to one and no rotation. All right. So there's our transform component. Now we want to actually load the sprite component. So we go local sprite and we'll just say it's equal to BG tile add component, sprite component. And it's going to take, which sprite is it taking? It's taking the BG, because that's the name that we gave it, the asset name. It is 256 by 256. 
and it starts at zero, start X zero, start Y zero, and layer zero. We want it at the bottom. And we go to Sprite, and we want to generate the UVs. And that's it. So if we come to our main, after we load our assets, we can load our background. And hopefully I spelled that right. Let's go back. Background. Main. Let's just make sure. And let's run it. See if we get it. Awesome. There's our purple background. That's perfect. All right. So it's not so dull anymore. And now let's go back into creating the asteroid. So if you actually took a chance to try to create the asteroid class by yourself, leave a comment below and let me know what you did. Maybe show me, uh, leave a little snippet of your implementation and it may be better than this one. So we might use that instead. All right, so the asteroid class needed to have a rotation direction, a min speed, a max speed, the current velocity that it's going and the rotation speed. The velocity and the rotation speed were supposed to be chosen in a somewhat random way. We also needed to try to update the asteroid's position and check the position in the world as well so it could appear on the other side. If you were able to get that done and you have some asteroids moving around your screen, that's awesome. Please post in the comment below all about your progress and let us know. If not, that's okay. Let's go over it right now, my implementation of how to do it right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our asteroids class. So open up a new file and we'll call it asteroid.lua. Asteroid.lua. Okay, so we have that there. And if you remember, we're gonna to wanna to make the asteroid namespace or table. We have our asteroid table. And then we're gonna to wanna to set it index meta method. Asteroid dot index is equal to asteroid. Okay. Then we're gonna to wanna to say function asteroid, create the asteroid. And it's going to take in some parameters. Okay. And the first thing I'm actually going to want to do is grab the asteroid definition from the params. So our params, we're going to assume that we sent in the definition with the params or, you know, let's just call this def. Yeah. And we'll say local asteroid is equal to asteroid defs at def. So we want to make sure that we have that def and let's just assert that. Make sure that we actually do have an asteroid that it's not no. Asteroid def does not exist. Cool. And just like before, we're going to have the local, this table. And this is where we're going to do our stuff. So we're going to take our def and just go m def is equal to def. And then we go m type is equal to asteroid dot type. M entity ID. We'll just set it to negative one for now. And then we're going to have our rotation direction. And for rotation direction, it's just going to be a multiplier that we're going to use. So we'll go M rotation dear is equal to math dot random negative one and one. So it could have no rotation. Then we're going to have our min speed. So min speed is equal to asteroid dot min speed, max speed, to asteroid, max speed. And now we have our velocity and velocity is equal to, now we wanted this to be random, so we'll get to that. I'll just say nil for now. And rotation speed. So M rotation speed. We'll just have that a random value between one and four. Okay. 
Then we're gonna to wanna to set the entity ID. Now what we can do inside of here is we can go with this dot M entity ID is equal to load entity. And we're gonna send in the asteroid. So we're sending in that definition that we received from the asteroid devs to actually create the asteroid. And before we keep going, let's just finish with the set meta table. And that'll be this self and then return this. Okay. Then we're gonna to wanna to go local entity. The actual entity is equal to, let's create a reference to the entity, this.mEntityID. So we're grabbing the real entity and we're gonna to wanna to say local transform is equal to entity get component. transform component and we're going to want to set the position so transform dot position is equal to okay so how are we going to do that so we have two things we have to do here we have to get our velocity and we have to get our random position and these two were supposed to be random so let's just make a function called get random position and says our position is a vec2 so this is going to have to return a vec2 so let's take this and we'll put this in our utilities as well we'll just put it at the bottom here Get rid of that, get random position. Now we'll just go function and cool. That's one that we're gonna need. Let's go back to our asteroids class. And here we're gonna need another function and we're gonna call this get random velocity. Get ra random velocity. And the random velocity is gonna take in our min speeds and max speeds. So asteroid dot min speed and asteroid dot max speed okay let's copy this go to our functions and we'll put this in here this is the function cool let's take away the asteroid so it has min and max speed all right, so the random velocity is pretty straightforward. We need to return a vec2 for both of these functions. So first thing we're gonna do is go return vec2. And we're gonna to wanna to say math dot random min speed max speed. Math dot random min speed max speed. That's it. Now it might not be perfect, but it'll do the job that we need. Cool. That's all we need for that one. The get random position one is a little bit different. We want the asteroids to start outside the window. Well, that's how I want it to be. It doesn't have to, you can make them start wherever you want. It just needs to be in a random position. So we need to go return back to math.random. And we're gonna say window width plus window width. So this will be outside the screen somewhere. And we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing, math.random, but change it to height. Now again, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is working for me. Cool, that's it. So we got those two functions. Let's go back into our asteroids and let's create a little update function. And we'll go function, asteroid, update and end and we'll go local entity is equal to entity self dot m entity id then local transform we want to get the transform of the asteroid is equal to entity dot get component transform cool now that we have the transform, we want to adjust the position based on the velocity of the asteroid. So we go transform dot position is equal to transform dot position plus self dot m velocity. And we'll change that if we have to. So let's just try that out for now. And then we're also gonna to wanna to do the same thing for rotation. So transform 
dot rotation is equal to transform dot rotation plus self dot m rotation speed times self dot m rotation direction. And you can put this in brackets if you like. You don't have to, it should, it should know, but we'll do that. Okay, so that changes our transform. And now we need to get the sprite. So we might as well put that up here. So local sprite to go to entity, get component, sprite component. And that's so we can check the position. So we go check pause and it takes in the transform position and the sprite width and the sprite height. All right, we're just gonna create one asteroid for now. I will just call it G asteroid and we'll get it to see if it works. So that's pretty much it. And let's go into our main. And just right under here, we'll just do G test asteroid is equal to asteroid create. And we wanna create, what do we call them? Oh, we also gotta go back before we do that and adjust our entity depths because it's going to be looking for a min speed and a max speed. And for the small asteroid, we'll set this to negative five by five. And let's copy this and go to the large asteroid up here or the big asteroid. And we'll set that to negative two and five. So we'll just give it a smaller window uh, so the big ones won't be as fast, which may, may or may not be a good thing. Okay, that should work for us. Am I missing anything else? Let's just go and make sure. Speed, type. All right, we're good. Before we can actually do that, we need to load in the asteroid. All right, so that should run. Let's take our asteroid and update it. Our asteroid is updating and let's see if it runs. And we got lots of errors, awesome. So asteroid 17, expecting this bracket and utility is 98. So let's go to asteroid 17. And that's my fault right here. You don't forget to put the commas. I think that was one of the comments I made yesterday. And back here, we're missing something here. Yep, we don't need this comma here. All right, let's try again. All right, so we're missing one more thing. Asteroid depth does not exist. Perfect. Probably because we didn't send anything in. Back to main. Yeah, so create and we'll create a big one. It still does not exist. So we're sending in a def. We must have called it something else. I probably did. So let's go back here and uh, asteroid big, asteroid big and asteroid small. So it was more specific than just big and small. Okay, so let's go back to our main and it's asteroid big. That should work now. No, it still doesn't like me. All right, so utility is 96. Attempt to perform arithmetic on a nil value. So it's saying it doesn't see global uh, widow width. And that makes sense because what is the widow width? Widow. Window. All right. You know, a lot of these mistakes you guys probably already caught. So let's try again. And it's having an error here. Transform. Yeah. So it's trying to do stuff that probably from me typing too fast. Transform right here, transform. Transform. Did we get them all? I think we did. All right, try again. All right, there it is. Now we can't crash into it yet, but it's, it's moving around and it's going through the scene and it should show up on the other side. Awesome. That's great. So we have one, one asteroid. It's not doing anything, but that's okay. And it just moves randomly, random speed, random rotation. Perfect, that's great. So if we run it again, let's see if it's faster or slower. 
clicks around the same speed, so it's not that random. That's why it's like pseudo random. Or it's not even random at all because we probably forgot to do something. Actually, we did forget to do something. So whenever using math.random, you need to actually set the random seed. And I forgot to do that. So let's do that right now. And we'll just do that right here. We'll go, uh, you know what? We'll do that actually first. We'll do math.random seed. And we'll just set that to the OS time. All right, let's try to run that and see if things are random now. Ah, there it is, come from a random direction. Good, that's exactly what we want. Awesome. All right, that's great, but one asteroid is not gonna cut it. We're gonna have to do a few more asteroids. So I think we should have a new function and we'll call it spawn asteroid. Let's get rid of this one. Okay, because we know it works and we know it's random. And that's what we want. So we'll go back into, go back into our utilities here. And we'll go function spawn asteroid. Okay, so this is where we actually have to go into the engine and create something that we haven't, we don't have yet because we don't have a timer. So we're gonna have to create a quick timer so we can actually spawn at specific times. So we'll go into the engine and in our Scion utilities, here, we'll actually add in a new timer class. So let's come in and go timer.h. What was the namespace we gave our sign utility? So we called it sign util. So let's go into our timer and sign util. Cool. All right. So what we're going to need for our timer, first, let's just create the class. So class timer, we'll have private, public, Timer constructor and destructor can be default. Actually, the constructor might be able to be default as well. Yeah, we'll put this as default as well. Okay, first thing we're going to need actually is chrono. So we're going to need to include the chrono library. So include chrono. And we're just going to say using namespace std chrono because chrono is a rather ver verbose namespace. And then we'll say we need a time point. That's a steady clock. And that's going to be our start point and start point. And then we're going to have a pause point. Paused point. And then we're going to have two bools. We're going to have bool mb is running and mb is paused. And both of these can start as false. All right. So we're going to have a few functions. It's going to have the start, stop, pause, resume. Okay, and then we're gonna want, whoops, then we're gonna want the const int 64t elapsed, elapsed milliseconds, and then elapsed seconds. And then we'll have some inlines, inline const bool is running, const, and that's just going to return or is running. That's his pause. And then is pause as well. Okay. So that's the start of the timer. Let's now create this. All right, so that will create all of our stuff for us. Let's open that up. Timer.cpp. Namespace. Scion util.
All right. So the start function is pretty straightforward. We want to go if not started or not running. So if we're not running, we want to set our start point to now. Start point is equal to steady clock now. Then we want to set M B is running is equal to true. And if it was paused, we want to set it to M pause is false. Cool. And stops pretty straightforward. If we're running, is running is false. Keep doing that. Then our paused if MB is running and not paused. Then we want to say MB is paused is equal to true. And pause point is now equal to now, not steady. Clip. So we'll have two different things. So you have your start and your paused point. So we're going to want to hold on to the time that we paused it so we can take that away from the time now when we restart it. Okay. So if it goes if and B is running and paused. Now we want to set pause to false. and set the start point to plus equal duration cast of milliseconds. Steady clock now, minus the paused time or the paused point in time. Does that make sense? So up here, we start it and we have a running clock right now. So this is the point in time where we started it. And then this is the point in time where we paused it. Now we add now minus when we paused it. So our point in time keeps going from there, okay? So now we'll do the elapsed milliseconds. So we will, first thing we wanna do is check to see if it's running. So if we're running, there's two things we can return. We can return the pause time. So the point in time when we paused it or the actual time it is now. So we'll go return duration cast. But before we do that, let's check to see if MB is paused. Then we'll return a duration cast in milliseconds of the paused point minus the start point. And we want to get the count of that. And we can copy this, go else. We want to return now minus the start point. So that's steady clock, steady clock. Now, minus the start point, and that's the count. Cool. And if we don't have any, if we're not running, just return zero. So the time will be zero if it's not running. And for seconds, we just want to return elapsed milliseconds divided by a thousand. All right, that's it for the timer. And now we have to quickly bind this timer. And instead of just doing it in here, we can just do a quick function inside of our scripting system. So let's go to our script system, come up here and let's add in our utility. So include sign on utilities and grab our timer. And down here in our register functions, we can just do a, another, actually not a register function. We'll just do this its own little Lambda function here. 
Okay, so we'll just go auto create timer is equal to this will take in a sole state reference blow up. Cool. So we'll create this little lambda. And we'll say inside of this, we'll say using namespace scion util. We'll say Lua dot new user type timer. We're creating a new timer user type and we'll say timer soul call constructor soul factory. Turn timer. That's all we have to do for that. And we're going to want our start. That's just going to take in the timer start. Our member function. Start, stop, pause, resume. And then let's create a restart. And that we can just go Lambda function, go timer. We could probably have done this in the timer, but I'm already doing it. So if timer is running, timer.stop. Timer dot start. So that'll basically restart it for us. And we'll take our is paused. So is paused. And that's some more. Actually, let's move this down below. Because these are all going to be member functions here. So is paused is exactly that. It's paused is paused is running. And then elapsed milliseconds. And elapsed seconds. Okay, and that should be good. All we have to do now is call this and we can just call it right here. Takes our Lua state. Cool. All right, so that should work. That should make a timer for us. So if we go back to our utilities, before we do anything, let's just do it, check to see if it works. So let's say local timer is equal to new timer. And then we'll say timer start. And then we'll print the time. And so we'll just say print a eh, Timer elapsed milliseconds. Okay, and let's take this spawn asteroids and put it into our main update function right here and see if it works. So, this is going to compile our timer as well that we just put in. And it's just saying zero. And that's not good. Let's go back. Actually, that won't work because every time this runs, it's going to create a new timer. As soon as it leaves the scope, that timer is going to be gone. So it's not good. It's always going to be zero here. So what we're going to need to do is actually create like a global and we'll call it spawn timer. And that's equal to timer. And inside of here, we're going to say, or you can take in a timer if you want, but this is what we'll do. And we'll just say this, we'll say G spawn timer start this is just for a test let's run it and see okay so we're failing somewhere global timer 
Yeah, duh. <laughs> I gotta change them both if I'm gonna change it. Okay, run it. And we got our time, perfect. That's what I wanna see, that's what I wanna see. Good, so now let's get rid of this here. Actually, we'll keep that. And we'll just say, if not, G spawn timer is running then we'll start it okay and and now we want to say let's just say like every two seconds we will spawn a new asteroid so g spawn timer elapsed seconds so every two seconds, then end. I will say local val is equal to math dot random. And we'll say between one and three. And then if val is equal to one, then local asteroid is equal to asteroid create and then this one will be a asteroid big and we'll copy this else if if it's equal to two we'll create a small asteroid Then else if it's equal to three, then this will just be a to do, a to do for now. So to do, and eventually we'll create a ship, create new ship, like enemy ship. Cool. And and then down here, we'll just stop the timer. We'll just put it in here. G, G spawn timer, stop. Cool. All right, let's see if that works. And it doesn't. Why? Because they are, they're probably spawning, but we're not updating any of them, if that makes sense. So we can put a little test in for that and just say print big, copy this, print small, and see if we're getting any created. So yeah, so it would have made a small one there, big one. So they're actually being created, but there's a problem. We're not loading them anything so we're not updating them and where are they in the world so what we can do is we can create an asteroids table that will hold on to our asteroids and we can add asteroids and remove asteroids and update asteroids so it'll loop through them all all the asteroids that are in the scene and do the update so we go function add asteroid and that'll take in an asteroid And we're going to want to say table dot insert asteroid. And we're going to put in the asteroid that we're sending it pretty straightforward. And then remove asteroid. We'll go function, remove asteroid actually we will worry about that in the next video because the next video we're going to get into collisions and we don't really need to worry about removing them right now so in this video we'll just actually worry about updating them so we'll go function update asteroids and 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 then we're going to want to loop through all the asteroids so we can go 4 k v in pairs Asteroids do B dot update. All right, 
So now that we have this add function, we need to add in our asteroid. So instead of printing big, let's send in our asteroid. Then that's the created asteroid. Cool. And now that we have our update, let's take this and go to our main. And right after we update our ship, we'll update our asteroids. Okay. They should come in eventually. There they go. There's one. Let's see if we get another one coming in. There's the other one. There's three. All right. So we have asteroids coming in. There you go. So that's it for this video. So in the next video, we're actually going to start looking into collisions. So we're going to start doing collision detection. We should use a box collider component and a circle component. So a circle collider. So for this game, box collider doesn't really make sense. We'll just use a circle collider. That's what we're going to use, but we're going to put them both in. So if you want to get ahead, think about what a box collider component is going to need and that's what a circle collider component is going to need and add those in. So try to add those into our components here, up here in our components. So add in a box collider component and a circle collider component, or you can just call it circle collider or circle components up to you and do the bindings for them. Think of what you need and do the bindings for those. And then we'll go over how we're going to do it, how we're going to actually do the collision detection. Now, all the collision detection right now is going to be done in the Lewis scripts. So you got to think about that. Right now we don't have physics in our engine. So we're not going to work, the, the engine's not going to be doing the physics for us. We have to do the physics ourselves. So we're going to be doing that in Lewis scripts and we'll go over that in the next video. Okay, take it easy.